Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 18th of August 2011. Although we're getting more sunspots on the Sun, solar activity seems to be lessening. But before we get to that, today's trivia's question is in the form of a riddle. What was discovered in 1868 during a total eclipse of the Sun by a Frenchman? Unfortunately, he misidentified it. And it took two Englishmen to identify it properly, and they named it. First samples of it were found on Earth, in the lava from Mount Vesuvius, by an Italian. However, a pure sample of it was not obtained until 27 years after the original discovery, and that was done by two Swedes. What am I talking about? The answer will be given at the end. From the ghost plot, we see that since yesterday we've had four sea flares. The X-ray background, however, has been steadily dropping to below the B2 level. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's been going on there. We now have three numbered regions on the disk. Region 1271 is by far the largest and seemingly started to produce some of the activity. A couple of the sea flares that we've had have been attributed to it. So let's take a closer look at it. Once again, as I maintained yesterday, there seems to be more than one region here. Not only were the ones that I was talking about yesterday uh, still there, there's a new region growing to its north and west uh, that has popped up in the last 24 hours. If you look at its magnetic structure, you can see the region is very complicated, but clearly there are at least three regions, maybe four or even five regions involved in this one complex. Moving on to region 1272 in the southeast, this looks as though it has simplified significantly since yesterday. However, it's still producing the odd sea flare. Lastly, region 1273. This had a couple of satellite regions around it yesterday, but those have gone away. But it remains a small group of poor, like sunspots, and so I don't think it's going to be the source of very much activity unless it grows significantly. Now let's take a look at the development and dynamics of these regions, particularly focusing on region 1271. In the sunspot movie you can see that it's developed significantly over the last 24 hours, whereas the other two regions seem to have decayed somewhat. Similarly in the magnetic movie, the structure and variability of this region is now beginning to become apparent as it's rotating further onto the disk. Next let's turn to the transition region movie. And we're here we're looking for a filament eruption or prominence eruption that might indicate a coronal mass ejection has occurred. However, unlike yesterday, there doesn't seem to be a lot of activity going on. See if you can see any events here. Using the low temperature coronal movie, see if you can identify where the four C flares occurred. Go look up the times from the original plot and see what regions are brightest at the time of those flares. Hard, isn't it? Next, let's turn to the chronograph data from SOHO. In the C2 instrument, you can see that we had some spectacular uh, CMEs yesterday. However, today has been less productive. Please see the video I made last night about that strange object moving across the southern part of the field of view, if that interests you. The solar wind data show us that the temperature and density of the solar wind hasn't changed greatly in the last 24 hours. However, the velocity has decayed somewhat to about 350 kilometers per second. The high energy electron flux remains at modest levels. As we've had no big flares, the proton monitor is showing background levels. The auroral zone looks even quieter than it was yesterday, and the KP index is correspondingly varying between 0 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background has dropped below the B2 level, the sunspot number has risen to 44, radio sun intensity has remained at 90 solar flux units, solar wind speed has dropped to 380 km per second with a density of 3 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are very quiet. I don't see any reason to change my 24-hour forecast from yesterday, with a good chance of C flares. M flares are just possible, but I think it's very unlikely that we're going to get any X flares. The sunspot number should ease higher. We still have a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed should drop lower. And the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is very poor. From the composite coronal image, we can see that there is a faint region just about to come over the east limb, although there wasn't any sign of it in the X-ray data earlier. But in two or three days' time, we should have a much larger region coming over the northeast limb. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow the links to some of the uh, sites that I have in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the sun today or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. 
The answer to the trivia question is helium. It was discovered in a spectrum of the sun uh, by a Frenchman uh, who misidentified it as part of the sodium lines. Two Englishmen then uh, named it helium because they thought it was exclusively associated with the sun. The same prominent yellow line was detected in a spectrum of uh, the gases coming off from lava from Mount Vesuvius. And lastly, uh, two Swedes managed to isolate helium in the lab. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.